my new best friend, Ray from Brightspeed. So Founders Week at my work. So they made us do selfies with, with Flat Ray. You know, so fun stuff. But my, just let everybody know, we, we went to South Carolina and and whatever they're telling you on the news, it's true. It's horrible. It's it's not good. Um, there's no words. I can't explain it. But our kids just did get their power back on on Sunday night. And they're doing better. Um, there's just no groceries. There's no fast food. You know, that kind of stuff. So it's as bad as it is. Everything's good because they're they're fine. So I'm good with that. Hey, so, mom. Hey, so, little Gary. So, hi, Gary. Hey, mom. And so, <clears throat> and I lucked out. And, and I'm going to tell you, I lucked out because I got some really good guests tonight. The bad news is, is one of the three couldn't make it. His went to his mom's funeral, and so our hearts go out to Jay Lynch um, for the death of his mom, and happy birthday to Teresa Lynch at the same time. So, but we're going to welcome uh, Joe Kudo and Jason Snyder to the Paranormal Pride. How's it going, everybody? Oh, great. Good. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having us. So, what's going on with Joe? <laughs> I don't know. What happened to me? I don't know. You're, up, uh, I see you you, up, you uh, look uh, like a big microphone. Yeah. Whoa. You look, you're... Uh, you're a ghost. Your video's not. Okay, well, that's fine. Oh. You're in... So, he's, like he said, he before the show, he's frozen down there. he dislikes strangers. He's frozen the picture down there. Yeah, and the fridge. Uh, picture down there. Get back out and come back in. Yeah, he'll be back on. Yeah, just send him a message. Tell him to come back. I just... I made it fast. I just kicked him out real quick. Maybe he'll come back real fast. <laughs> no, he, yeah, he will. We yeah, have problems seen, with that every once in a while. Yeah, he says he doesn't like StreamYard, but, you know, it's one of the easiest programs to use for streaming. So, so before the, so let's see, let's go with, we spent some time with you, some quality time in Ozark, Arcan, or Ozark Alabama. Yeah. That was a, that was a fun event. Um, it was. It was put on well. Um, yeah. I can't. I can't say enough about uh, everybody that um, was a part of that uh, Deep South Paracon. Um, they ran it well. Uh, they took care of everybody. Um, I know that they had some other big festivals and fairs going on around the area, uh, which kind of hindered the attendance a little bit. But it wasn't anything uh, that that they did wrong. It was. Um, Right. Very well run. And um, I, we had uh, Scott and I had a great time. Yeah, we said that it's one of the events we would go back to. Even Absolutely. though, we, well, we teased a lot about how many left turns does it take to get to Ozark? And it was a lot. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm going to tell you the only thing that got me with Ozark, I'm not a snake guy. I, I'm not, I, I don't do snakes very well at all. And leaving that day, uh, it had rained a little bit and the, you know, just kind of that muggy weather. Um, I got about, I don't know, two minutes outside the parking lot and saw a little snake in the road, I, you know, like a little, like we would call my gardener snakes. I'm like, no, okay, well, that's fine. I got about 15 or 20 minutes down the road on those old two lane roads. And I thought there was a log in the street. So I'm like, all right, well, I got to go around it. Um, until the log was actually moving um, <laughs> across, and it was from head to tail as long as the lane is wide, wow. and it was probably as big or big around as my forearm. Um, and that's when I said, you know, if I could just get out of Ozark, Alabama, <laughs> I'd be okay. <laughs> because, yeah, that uh, that was a that was a big old snake. Yep. Uh, mm -mm. So, no, what I time did you guys finally get out? Um, we left probably two o'clock the afternoon. Scott had to get back and I had to start making my trek home because, uh, it was about a 13 hour drive for me. So I got up into Kentucky and spent the night and then 
headed home the rest of the way the next day. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you got to come down. I'm glad we went over. You know, that we planned on going. We just didn't I'm just glad we didn't volunteer. They'd have had way more volunteers than they needed. Yeah, for sure. Like I said, it was the the event was well done. Um, they were very hospitable. Uh, everything was good there. I just think that there was a couple other events going on in that area there that uh, hindered the attendance for sure. Not to mention college football had started, and mm -hmm. you know there was a game up at Troy. I think it was. No, they're no, out of town. They're out of town. Figure people were probably watching a football game somewhere. Yeah. But but I'll tell you, every hotel. The hotel, you know, the hotel you guys were at was the only place that had a room when we went to look. Yeah. And we didn't even look for a room until you guys were at dinner. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So that was the only room left at the time. So, and apparently we were where we needed to be. So, but that's a long, unusual story. Hello, so, Tom. Hello, Crystal. So, Joe, I know you didn't go to this event. No. But... We wish, even further. yeah, it would, it would have been a horrible drive, for you. <laughs> right? So, um, so how do you guys know each other? Oh, so we all met, um, through Jay actually. Um, Jay and Joe met about I don't know a couple months before we actually I met, yeah. um, Jay, and it all kind of stemmed around. Um, a location uh, in Southern Ohio. And um, we were all just kind of doing some investigating and um, out meeting people. And um, we all just kind of met and kind here of we are. Here we are years later. Is Joe, is your first language sarcasm as well? No, never. Never? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why you guys have the producer with the button where you beep, you know, yeah. <laughs> no, he doesn't have a button. I have a finger. That that means <laughs> I'm the one that kicked you out. <laughs> right. When, when you froze. So yeah, see. Somebody's got a button. I like to have fun. I, I I like to be a smart ass. Well, you know, uh for my one of my birthdays, my mom got me a plaque. This is I mean, I wasn't even a I was barely a teenager and it was called the thirteenth commandment. Thou shalt not be a smart ass. So, yep. How, how'd that work? <laughs> Apparently, it didn't work because, didn't work. Uh, like I said, sarcasm is my first language. Right. And I learned it before I learned English. So, but you know, living in New Jersey and Maryland and Virginia, you you gotta look, you gotta know it all. So, Joe has a potty mouth, a poopy mouth. <laughs> So is that true? Maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe. Because maybe. we don't want the Facebook fact checkers coming on and saying that that they got to block this comment because nope, it's nope. I already already figured out. I was you're going to get the Disney version of Joe tonight. What? Oh, really? Why? <laughs> the Disney version? I well, you know what? It doesn't matter because this isn't my show, so I don't have to write the checks. So that's, I mean, that's fine. <laughs> that's that's usually the joke with us is when him or Jay are going to start going off. I just reach down here and pull out the checkbook because I know I'm going to have to start writing checks to somebody that's going to get offended. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, the last time I had Jay on with Teresa, we also had on Rick mm -hmm. and they proceeded to sing Baby Shark and we had mm -hmm. to stop them. Yeah. You know, I just can get you in trouble. <laughs> I I just sent um uh so Tina who is uh Teresa's friend uh, up in Canada hates that song and that thing just came through my Facebook Nobody I don't likes. know like I don't know a week ago and I sent it to her and all I got was just big mean faces like you son of a <laughs> oh yeah cuz she hates it and I know oh, she hates it so I know. send it to her every chance I get so you don't like baby shark why? I mean, what about the metal version? That's good. That's a good one. How about the Umbrella Academy when they played it the whole time almost through the <laughs> for four, I, four, I, four, I enjoy the um, I enjoy the Umbrella Academy. 
I was sad that it ended the way that it ended, but yeah. it had to. But I think yeah. that there's going to be another one that's going to come out of that because the marigolds were still there. Let's hope. But that's, I'm not big into comic book crap and all that. I have no idea. What he has, he has no clue. He didn't see it. No, I, you know what? The Umbrella Academy. Yeah. Umbrella Academy. Academy. Yeah. You can watch it on Netflix. I think it's still on Netflix. Yeah. Um, it's, it's something neat. If you like, um, hey, Jay. Like Avengers and I mean, that kind of a thing. Um, if you like that style of, you know, if you like that style of stuff, like the Avengers and Marvel and that, it's it, kind of that similar thing. Um, it, I haven't it made you it. think. Yeah. It's, you it's know, fun. So, it's but fun. yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, that, you know, I'm not into that stuff, but I thought it was well written and it was a different story. Finally, yeah. something unique. Will it be in the dark realm? <laughs> we don't ha we don't have that kind of money, brother. No. <laughs> so yeah, he Jay said he was going to try to log in a little bit tonight, back and forth. Well, from if he, if on. he wants to join, you can just send him the link and he can come and join. But you know, Jay, we're so sorry for for the loss of your mom and and tell Teresa we said happy birthday. We started off the the show with that way, so. We wanted you to know that we were with you in, in spirit. Yeah, so, I know he's he's still got a lot of family stuff going on, so he's yeah yeah. I, I know that he's not gonna he won't join tonight, but he I, he obviously he's watching. So uh, I appreciate it, Jay. So so you guys met and you guys decided. I mean, we all I I mean I know how stirring the pot got started. I know I know that story. Um, because of the fact that, you know, I know when it started. <laughs> so and, that's, and that was the thing. Jay and I started stirring the pot. And, you know, we'd all done some uh, Z talk and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, Joe had actually done some uh, professional radio stuff prior to that. Um, but we had started stirring the pot. Jay and I just wanted to get back on. Um, Jay and Teresa were still doing sit, chat, and laugh with the lynches. Um, and our first guest, we were like, well, let's bring Joe on. We'll bring Joe on as a guest and we'll get this whole thing started. And five years, five or six years later, Joe's still on the show and can't um, leave. he can't leave. So can't leave. Joe started as our first guest and we just kept running with it and <laughs> became an having, intern and he was an intern. He was getting <laughs> coffee and now yep. he's production manager uh, with LED. And... Yeah, he's he, uh, he's worked his way up. He's a, he's a hard worker. <laughs> he's a good fluffer. Uh, we keep him around. I don't know if you recall this, Jason, mm -hmm. but that actually came up at the Paracon. It did. I was talking to Scott. Yeah. And Ron. Yep. <laughs> you need a good fluffer if you're <laughs> if you're going to be successful. You need a good fluffer. Yeah. If you don't have one of them, you're getting nowhere. You got to right. get one. You have to have one. Yeah, I hear they got quite a few of those in Springfield, Ohio. There's, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, Lord, baby Jesus. This is Disney version, right? We're doing yeah, Disney version. Yes. Okay. I don't know why. I mean, if my mom was here, that'd be a whole different thing. But she passed away and she's not on here anymore. I used to tell everybody, you know. I don't care what you say as long as you don't use, you know, the F word. And I still don't like the F word, but I can handle it. My mom would go, see ya, and, ha and hang and stop watching. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we had an aunt that we couldn't, there was no cussing whatsoever around. And if she heard it, she would, it would highly upset her. So it was more of, she was kind of like the patriarch of the family, and it was just kind of, when when the aunt was around, it was a it was a clean version. I think my mom watched Turn the Pot once, like way back in the early days, and I think she said she made it five minutes. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and then mom. and and then I got the well, why do you guys gotta talk like that? Well, you know, I I do have that question sometimes. 
like when you were watching a paranormal show, why is the first word that, pe that people think to come out of their mouth is F this or F, you know, that's not the first word I think of when right. I'm in a pair, you know, I'm in a situation yeah, where I'm investigating and yeah, filming. and they know they're filming. The question is, is are they really saying that or are they just being beeped for entertainment to reasons? Like yeah. I think I think good raw reaction is great to catch on film and and that kind of stuff. What I don't like is the over the top stuff just to say it. Yeah. Or the over the top stuff just to just to continue it. It's when you start doing that it doesn't make sense. And when it starts not to not make sense and it becomes redundant and it's kind of silly and you kind of look like an idiot in my book. And that's yeah. lose people. Right. If it's a raw reaction and that's how your raw reaction would be, so be it. Then it is what it is. But if you just continue to do it, then it becomes, like I said, redundant and silly and you lose me. Because, I, I, I mean, I'll be honest. If I was somewhere and <clears throat> there was a spider on me, you're going to hear me cuss and then I'm going to scream like a little girl. Promise you. Jason's is a snake. Snake. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> And that's yeah. why Joe and I have tried to raise money for the last couple of years to donate and all that stuff. And I said that I would do a, a thing with snakes and he would do a thing with spiders. And we just had to reach a certain amount of money so we could donate to charity or, you know, food bins or whatever. I said I would let a, a tarantula crawl on me. Oh, it'd be fine. But granddaughter did, granddaughter did it. No, no, no. She said okay. it was pretty cool. Oh, I bet it is. Just help me. Right? I'm, I'm sure it is when they're not mad. <laughs> I'll watch from over there. Now I bet it's cool. <laughs> I remember. That I thought she was going to pet the al or hold the alligator, and she said, "No, I want the tarantula." And I'm like, "Okay, no." no. They had uh, black widows and tarantulas at the Smithsonian in Washington D.C. when I was a kid, and they would let them walk on you. They would put that. They would put them on a kid, and it was like, "Nope." Mm -mm. And but yet I've been to the Missouri State Pen where there was a spider that was as big as my hand. And I was fine. I shut the drawer that it was in and walked out and I never went back in that room. <laughs> and then at where the was Christ, this? Uh, the Missouri State Pen. Jason, that one's off the list. Right. No Missouri State Pen for Joe. <laughs> <laughs> and the Pike Mansion, they also have these big wolf spiders. Nope. Nope. Huge. Nope. <laughs> And another place, this was uh, not too far from Ohio, really, Natural Bridge State Park in Kentucky, I've down there, there off the Mountain Parkway. You're almost there, Mountain? Yeah, you're almost there. We went walking up this trail, and there was this guy sleeping. They had this little a place for you to sit because it's straight up a mountain. And he's sitting there taking a nap. And up above his head is this giant <laughs> spider is big with eggs. Uh, yeah, it was as big as his head. Mm -hmm. And I mean, and I wish I was kidding. I took a picture and because it was like that that spider didn't look real. That's where the uh, paramedics would have found me. Right. Because uh, no, it, my heart would have stopped instantly. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a spider person at all. And LinkedIn user, we don't, we can't see your name. So welcome. So um, our big thing down here that's horrible are jellyfish. So that's what I don't like. Now, I hate jellyfish. So is it true if you, if you get stung, you got to pee on it? Is that a true thing no. or is that a myth? That is a myth. Now, that's okay. that's how you uh, find out who the tourists are actually. Yeah. Gotcha. The tourists out on the beach. Yeah, that's right. why they do that. When they Five start peeing on each other, be like, oh, you ain't from around here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Five percent vinegar in a spray bottle works. Um, oh, it's cat. Hey, cat. So, yeah, we went to the. I went, yeah, the vinegar does that scene that takes. We went to Cat's Beach. Takes the sting out of it. Yeah. We went to Cat's Beach out in Gulf Shores and I got attacked by a pink meanie and. It was wrapped around my arm and I <laughs> sprayed it and got back in the water and sprayed it again and got back in the water. And then the last time I was like, I'm done. So jellyfish are my, my nemesis. I do not like them. I do not like them at all. And uh, 
Is it like a bee sting or is it worse than yeah. a bee sting? Or? Yeah. It, it felt like a, a bad bee sting to start with. And then after that, it was 10 minutes later, I was fine. Gotcha. But like I said, it ra it's tentacles wrapped around my arm. So, I mean, I had all through here was all burned up. But two days later, you couldn't even tell anything happened. So, gotcha. So, better than a bee sting, it didn't itch. So, yeah, it didn't itch. So, a little bit of Benadryl, a little bit of Benadryl cream. Sleep it off, you're good. It's kind of, kind of like alcohol. Sleep it off and you're good. Sleep it off, you're good. I've and heard that before. And don't rub sand on it. Right. No. no. Also, don't put fresh water on it. Salt water is fine, but don't put fresh water on it. It'll make it burn. I got hit with one when I lived in Hawaii when I was married before. Got it right across the face here. Ooh. Oh. And, uh, Ouch. All, you know, my wife, she was in the Navy. And all her buddies were like, no, you got to rub sand on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got me. Oh, yeah. That At least they didn't pee on you. Yeah. Right? Right. Oh, not in the face. <laughs> Hold still, Joe. You need multiple streams to get rid of that. Yeah. yeah. Don't cross the streams. Again. <laughs> no sword fighting. <laughs> oh, no. That would be bad. So, so in the paranormal, though, are you guys, is there something in the paranormal that you guys just, besides these living things that, bother you about the paranormal in the paranormal scare you let's go with scare you because there's things in the paranormal that bother me all the time and they're not they're not paranormal you know like with me like what what freaks like not much scares me but what freaks me out is kids like anything with kids um you know kid you know i'm, I'm a big audio freak and you know like getting audio or it is like kids talk that, that creeps me out but other mm. than that no. How we on? Dealt too much with kid spirits, really. Not a whole lot. Where where was that at? We did a we did a investigation for the Coast Guard years like I don't know, probably 15, 16 years ago. And uh, we got to stay in the the little uh they have it's like a two floor building there, you know, now and we were setting up all the cameras and we, my wife and I, we had a camera in our room and we were, got that set up and then we did everything downstairs. Well, next day our audio guy's listening and he's like, Oh man. And I'm like, what? He goes, you don't want to hear this. And I'm like, well, then why'd you say that? Like now I want to <laughs> know. And he's like, no, you don't dude. And I'm like, yeah, I do. So he's like, okay. So he put headphones on, he played it back. And it was the camera that was in our room. And you can hear us all talking downstairs. It was all muffled and stuff. And because and, that was the first camera we put up. And right out, right on the on the audio, you hear a little girl say, Mommy, I'm glad we stayed there. And then I got to hear that because I probably wouldn't have stayed in that room that night. Wow. So. Was there any historical significance to this little girl? There were stories that a little girl fell off the lighthouse and, and stuff like that, but we could not find any kind of documentation about that. So, so I don't know. You and think then, there would was, be. Yeah, well, if it was so old. Yeah. And then the, the house that we lived in out in the country yeah. before we moved, well, I say moved to the city, but we now live in a one horse town. Um, this house, it for the longest time, I told my wife, I said, man, I'm hearing kids voices we, and our closest neighbor was like a mile away and uh kept hearing kids voice uh, matter of fact scotty Rourke had been to my house dozens of times and and has heard it but it was always off my living room because i had a little computer room there and i'd always hear it from there and there was an old one room schoolhouse on the property hmm. still there and uh heard it heard it and then my wife and my kids actually heard it one night we were just sitting there watching tv and all of a sudden you just heard mom and so that freaks me out when it comes to kids hmm. we had something similar in our first house um, that we had a 16 year old boy that would call mom and i'd say what and he'd go away and this went on for about 11 years oh, wow. that yeah 11 years that we lived in the house and 
I didn't think anything of it, but of course that was the, how Ron found out that I could see spirits was later on. It was about 11 years when he found out. And I was telling him about this boy for years before, it, before he even figured it out that I could see spirits or be, let's go before I came clean and told him, but yeah, it is, it is strange when it's, a child because you assume that children would naturally cross over that they wouldn't stay they would go where the people are that they belong to you know their families is, is what my thought would be but that's not what i've seen not all the time anyway yeah i had one with that involved a child that actually um messed me up to where i put all the equipment away and didn't touch it for months um we were called out there was a fifth generation jewish winery in ashtabula ohio which is now um, a haunted house and corn maze and uh, they do a fantastic job out there um, we usually go out every year for it um, we filmed uh, a movie out there years ago uh, called the winery um, but when they started changing the house from the actual little farmhouse it was to this haunted attraction, they were having a lot of issues. So they called us out to investigate it, and we went out and investigated over the course of about a month. We were out a couple of weekends, and um, I actually physically saw a child uh, looking at me at the bottom of the steps. Um, but the face of the child was... Like if you had the silly putty back in the day and you put it on like the paper and then pulled it, it kind of looked like the like an elastic face. It yeah. wasn't wasn't scary, but it was elongated. Everything was stretched out. Uh, the hair was wet and matted. Um, but I could we had just taken a break and we I sat down with my back against the wall and I could see down the hallway. And at the end of the hallway was where the steps came down. And there was two other investigators there with me, and we were just talking about the night, and you know, talking about where we, what we were going to do next. And I glanced down the hallway, and right there, the the child's face was peering around the corner at me from the bottom of the steps. Um, and it, you know, you you see it, and then you look away to talk, and then it registers like, did I just see what I think I saw? And you look back, and it was still looking at me, and what seemed like forever uh, was actually only about three or four seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and then the kid shot up the steps and we actually have it on audio. You can hear the footsteps running up the, running up the stairs. And we had a, a recorder at the top and you can hear it run by the, the uh, audio recorder uh, later on that night. And you know, the investigators like, Oh my God, you hear that? What was that? And I was like, you you guys won't believe me if I, if I told you, you know, it was just kind of one of those things where you want it to happen and you're looking for it to happen and you're asking for it to happen. And then it finally happens and you're like, shit, I don't know if I was ready for, for that. Right. You know, that's, I tell everybody, you know, be careful what you wish for and be careful what you ask for, because when you open up enough, they, they're ready to, they, they want to talk to you. They want to, you know, they want to be there with you. Um, and if you're not ready, it's uh, it's definitely something that makes you rethink uh, what you're doing. Like, and that was years ago. And I could still to this day sit down with a sketch artist and draw it out 100% in detail. That image of what I saw is embedded in me um, and we were actually able to, like I said, we've, we do a lot of work with them um, and able to go back out. Um, we got a name on the recorder and I gave it to the family and they were actually able to authenticate the name that came over the recorder um, as a child from that family um, that had actually died on the property. Um, oh, hit, wow. his, hit his head on one of the, the stakes out by the... Um, up by the trees, the the grapes. And like mm -hmm. I said, it's a winery. They still grow grapes and stuff on the property, but they also do mm -hmm. uh, the corn maze and that kind of stuff. But they still um, 
pull the grapes and do wine and stuff like that off the property. They actually work with a winery to do all that. But um, we were able to authenticate a ton of information that we actually got from our recorder and from the investigation. And we're actually able to sit down and talk with the family, you know, that was living there and, um, you know, get, get all that information and say, yes, there was actually a child named Tristan that lived on here that died here. So, but we, and I've been back out numerous times and I've never seen the kid again. I've never been able to talk to the kid again. Um, but that's, that's by far one of the most, um, things that I've had happen to me where once it was done, when I got back home and sat down with my wife about it, I'm like, I don't, I got to put this away for a little bit. I need to rethink what's happening. I need to rethink my journey in this because it's, um, it, it'll get you for sure. You know? So, so when they called you guys out or called you out to, to investigate this place, what did they want you to tell, you know, they just wanted to, they just wanted to basically see if what they were experiencing out there was, was actually happening. Um, because like I said, nothing was happening until they started building this uh, attraction inside the house. They started rearranging things, started building false walls, started doing all that kind of stuff in there and changing it around. And it was a very small little farmhouse, but they were putting up the fake walls and the walkways for the actors and that kind of stuff. And they started having things get knocked over and ladders get knocked over and the uh, people that were in their building were hearing things and seeing things. So they called us out just to, you know, are, are we seeing things or is there actually something happening here? And there was definitely a lot of things happening on that property. So they didn't want a resolution. They just wanted validation. They wanted validation. Yeah. They, they never asked us to get rid of anything. They never asked us, uh, you know, to try to help pass things over or anything like that. They wanted validation as to are things happening in this house? Um, and can you tell us what's going on? And we were actually able over the course of um, investigations, we were actually able to get them answers, which I thoroughly enjoy more than anything um, as an investigator, when you can conduct an investigation and not know anything about the history of where you're at. Yep. and get the information and get the evidence that you have, sit down with the people that brought you in and say, this is what we caught. Does any of this make sense? And mm -hmm. to see them say, you know, oh my God, yes, this is that. And this is yes. And that kid and this, and that to me is, is, is amazing. And that's why, that's why we all continue to do this is, is to try to get those answers. We don't want a whole lot of background information. I don't want a whole lot of, I don't want you to tell me what's going on. I want to go in and investigate, come up with whatever we come up with, if we come up with anything. All right. And then give it to you to see if any of it makes sense. Does any of this validate anything that you've called us out here for? And when it does, or when you're working with a psychic or a medium and what they're telling you or what they're doing in this room is validating what you're doing in this room and the two of you come together and show each other what you got and everything is working together and it's, and it's colliding to make this story. That's amazing. It's called the dead files. <laughs> right. That's kind of what we do. Yeah. We, we don't research. I don't do any research until it's till after the fact. And if we go back, then I have the research to validate any other things, you know, that we didn't know before. I, I, I would much rather go in blind and, you know, there's all these huge places out there that people talk about, but because I haven't been there, it's more like me going, la, 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 la. Right. <laughs> I don't want to know until I get there. But, you know, people tell me stuff all the time and I swear I forget more of it than what they, than I've been told, I think. Yeah. There's only so much room up here. Eventually it just all falls out. Right. Kelly Bundy effect. <laughs> can only hold so much until you get to the four touchdowns in one game, and that's and I that's when I gone. forget. Right. <laughs> that's funny. 
Well, I I utilize that a lot. That is true. She knows a lot of worthless information. <laughs> I do. I, I know I mean, a lot of a lot of crap. But then when it comes to my job, I know a lot of crap. Yep. So it all blends in together sometimes. Right. So. There's just a lot of crap going on up there. There is. And a lot of that crap is scary. So um, do you guys, so how often do you guys get together to work together besides the stirring the pot? We don't actually get to yeah. do as much as we'd like to. Um, Jay and I were doing a lot of stuff with Bodine over the last couple of years and then COVID obviously and, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. But with Joe living in Wisconsin and us in Ohio, uh, we don't get a chance to do as much as we would like to do, but that's changing. That's um, we're, we're definitely going to be doing a whole lot more together here. Um, especially starting uh, in 2025, we're, we're doing, um, Joe's coming in to, to an event that I'm doing um, here in, what, a week and a half or two weeks. Um, and then we're actually going out to Wisconsin to do a Paracon out with Joe out in his neck of the woods. So um, we're actually going to see each other quite a bit here in the next month or month and a half. Yeah. But we don't get a chance to do near as much as what we'd like to do. Yeah. That That's the event that you were telling us about. And April asked, where in Wisconsin? I told you uh, she should show up. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm, I'm in Dodgeville. Dodgeville. Dodgeville, Mineral Point area. So. Um, Where's the, the event is in? Kenosha. Kenosha. And that's the first weekend in November. Yep. Yeah, we'll just be getting back from our trip to see... Um, Ashmore. Yeah, Ashmore Estates. Where love we'll be Ashmore. With, love yeah, Ashmore. We'll love Robin. Friend. Yep. We'll yeah. be with your friend David Glidden. Dave. Dave's gonna. Dave's doing great things. Dave's he doing is. a lot of good things right now. Um, I did end up apologizing to him for calling his ass at one something in the morning, <laughs> but whatever. But, he well, loves you. Me. Know, I hate to say this, but. Payback's a bitch. <laughs> right. And that's okay. And that, that's okay. Right. But yeah. When you least expect it. Right. <laughs> no, David's David's doing good. Um, we've actually all talked about uh, doing some stuff together uh, for the network and some other things. Um, Robin, actually, Robin Terry will be at the uh, uh, event in Bell City, yep. Bell City Paracon in Wisconsin when we're out there. Um <laughs> Is he bringing the Scooby Doo mobile? He sold that. He sold the mystery machine. Yeah, he sold the mystery machine hmm. a year ago or a year and a half, two years ago, something like that. Uh, yeah. Well, hopefully he made good money off of it. I think it was it was one of those things where he was waiting for the right person in the right place. Right. And I um I can't remember exactly who he sold it to, but I know it went to a place um, that is going to. Uh, use it the way he was using it because he used that a lot to to give back to the kids and give back to charities and that kind of thing. And I know that was important to him without speaking for him. Um, yeah. But I I know that he sold it and I know that uh, it went to uh, to a place that he wanted it to go. Yeah, Robin is a good man. Robin's he's a he's a very good friend of ours. We've done. Uh, Jay, uh, Teresa and I, we used to go out probably two or three times a year to Ashmore and help him and do some things, um, help with different groups that would come in. Um, it's, a uh, that location is amazing. Robin has done amazing things with that location. Um, and he's just all around. He and Norma are fantastic people. Yeah. So far we haven't seen robin at ashmore we've seen him at other places you know gotcha. mineral springs hotel and i've had him on the show a few times and and like i said he's just a really nice guy you know and yeah but he's and he's honest yep i look forward to seeing the picture april so um but yeah he's 
he'll go out of his way for the right for the right reason. Yep. And he'll call out the right the wrong reasons. Yeah, Robin will definitely um, be in your corner and help you out 100 um, percent as long as you're honest and you're a nice person. Uh, when you're not, though, Robin is uh, not the guy you want to not the guy you want to upset. But every time we're out there, we always go out to dinner. We always go to Yoder's. Um, it, like I said, I can't I can't say enough about Robin and Norma. Um, they're fantastic people. And if you ever get a chance to book Ashmore Estates, you won't be disappointed there either. So far. That's true. <laughs> we've been twice and every other time of- I've been kept from being able to go. And I told you some of that. Right. You know, I got sick right after going there one time and you guys all, everybody showed up at Ash Bash and, you know, Rick and, and, uh, Cat and a bunch of other people were expecting us to show up and right. I was in the hospital. So um, we haven't been back since April 2019. So it'll be nice to go back. We've done some remote things there. You know, other people have been there and they've um, let us, you know, kind of remote view with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, that we- was fun. We actually have, um, and it's it going to be in the process of being edited now, um, so we can uh, put it on our streaming platform that's going to be launched here soon. Um, but we actually did an investigation one night, um, just a regular investigation. And then we also um, had the opportunity to use uh, the God helmet there uh, with yeah. Katie Stafford. We had, we actually had one. Uh, Terry Mosby had one there and Mm -hmm. we actually um, documented the whole entire experiment with um, different people using it. Same, same spot in the building, same everything. And we would put them under until they were obviously done with it, keep everybody separate and do all the uh, interviews and all that stuff with, with everybody. And it's um, that's going to be out here probably in the next few months. Uh, I did that. that was a neat experiment. In, um, yeah. I, yeah, I did it in uh, Web City in the theater there yeah. with Dave, you know, David's event in Joplin. Right. I was the first one in our group that to be able to use it because I told Katie, I said, you got to bring it because they didn't bring it to this other event that, that I saw him at. And I said, well, you got to bring it the next time. I said, because it ain't fair. <laughs> so, yeah. So he brought it and um, we used it there at that event and, and it was interesting, you know, um, but I mean, I had seen it, I'd seen it before, but I'd never used one. So, yeah. and Katie and Katie are good people. Definitely. Definitely another strong uh, couple that are doing really good things. There are some of the, Mm -hmm. They're some of the few people we miss back in Kansas City. Yeah, so. they're they're definitely good friends, and they're uh, they're both amazing. They they each bring a little bit different stuff to the table, um, yep. and, and together they're yeah they're they're an amazing couple. They're fun. I tell you, the first time I met them, it was in person. You know, because I was friends with KD for. Yeah, long time before. I mean, hell, probably when I started on Facebook years ago. Um, not long after that, anyway. And I ended up at this event where they were at. And in fact, I went to the event because they were there. Yeah, McIntyre. No, that was this is a different event. Oh, that's- and uh, Katie couldn't go in to they she had to stay at a table, and so Katie was in there talking about this, you know ghosts of Morgan city. And then he was mm-hmm. talking about his equipment and stuff. And he wasn't allowed to talk about, uh, the ghost of devil's perch at this point, you know? And so he's in there and he's talking about all this stuff and he's not paying attention to anything except for the people, which is what he's supposed to be paying attention to. Cause he's speaking. So he's not paying attention and Katie, she's not there to, to do anything. And she goes, 
she asked me to film it and that was it eventually we got to the point to where hey he needed to stop <laughs> the next person was coming on so i'm out there you know and he goes what are you doing i said you don't know what that is you're a speaker you're supposed to know that when somebody does does this your time your time is coming to an end hurry up right. <laughs> and that's what they got on their recording was me telling him to hurry up because he was done and they, he had never seen me in person before you know and ever since then he's tells everybody denise keeps me in line and i'm like i did i kept you in line once <laughs> it's funny it was memorable funny, funny you're talking about him because here's one of his uh one of his boxes actually from uh one of those episodes oh okay so i had him make me an original one which is this one here okay i took it to an investigation that i i usually don't do i did a solo investigation uh mm -hmm. it was for a friend um the father had died mother was um had passed they were selling the house the father had actually died in the house but it was years before when they were in their you know, getting everything ready and, and collecting everything to sell the house, they felt like dad was still there. So they asked me to do it. I said, yep, no problem for you guys. I will. Um, I said, let me go in, see what's going on, see if I can't make contact with anything. If I can and things are picking up, I said, then I'll call you guys. You guys can come in, help me on the investigation and see if we can't get you guys some answers before you sell. So they agreed. I went in. My buddy took me around the house, just showed me where everything was, and he left. As I'm setting up my equipment, I see a shadow or a figure in the kitchen, and it just kind of, kind of walks through. And I could see it enough to where I called him and I said, hey, can you tell me if this resembles your father-in-law whatsoever? And he was like, to a T. Now, again, I didn't have a picture of the guy. I didn't know what he looked like, anything. I said, okay. He's like, why? What's going on? I said, I'll call you back. So I start just setting up the equipment, but I'm talking. I'm asking questions. Um, I got a ton of information off of uh, the, the dad that was in this house. Come to find out, and I had kind of knew that he worked with my uncle, but not to the extent of what the EVPs were saying to me. He, my, my uncle was six, seven, he was a pipe fitter. He was six, seven, about 300 pounds. And I was saying, you know, uh, so you, you know, my uncle and whatever. And I got a giant, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is five or six minute EVP work and then go back and listen because over the yep. years of doing it, you, you spend hours of doing all this stuff and you're getting all these answers, but you don't get the answers until you're home and you're, you, right. you can't do anything with those answers. That's what I've said. So I do five or six minute intervals, go back and listen, see if you're getting answers and build from there. That's what I was doing. I had, uh, I had an SLS camera. I, I hooked up uh, right outside the, the bathroom where he uh, came out and had his, uh, medical issue and it passed. Uh, the SLS camera picked up the stick figure in the doorway, the whole thing. I called the family and I said, you guys might want to come back. So they came back and I, I got this box out and I let, you know, I turned it on. I told them what it was. They started asking questions and he was feeding through this uh, ghost box for about 45 minutes. Wow. And at the very end of it, um, you know, I, because they were like, you know, you can, you can pass, you can, you can, you're, you're good. Everything's fine. You know, we're getting ready to sell the house. You know, you don't need to stay here anymore. And they got all their answers and the box shut down. It completely, I, I yep. tried to look at it. I tried to do things. Yep. I changed batteries the whole thing. The, the I know box, what you're talking about. That box will not work ever again. So I thought about sending it back to 
KD and having him see if he couldn't just, you know, fix it and send it back to me. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give this to the family. I'm going to let the family have it as long as they promise not to mess with it anymore. And I asked Katie to make me another one. And that's when he sent me the other one from uh, one of the episodes that he did. But his boxes are amazing. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I got to give that one to the family, but I have another one from the show, but it's yeah. funny that we're talking about them because they've been sitting down here for a while and I haven't even got them out or moved them around or anything, but yeah, that's, that's one of the memorable, um, I don't usually do public invite or like privates anymore or going to homes and that kind of stuff. Cause what it turned out, and I know we talked about it that night was it turns into um, they want to see an episode of ghost hunters in their living room and they got right. aunts and uncles and cousins and everybody over there. And that's not, that's not why I'm, I'm there. That's not right. why we're there. You know, it's, if you need help, we can try to help you. I can't promise you anything. And that was the other thing I told him. I can't promise you that I'm going to be able to talk to your dad. I can't promise you that I'm going to be able to make contact with your dad and, and get you the answers. So let me go in and see what's going on first before you guys all get in there. And then you're all upset and you're all, mm -hmm. you know, dad doesn't love us anymore because he's not talking. Well, I mean, that's not quite how it works. Yeah. But I don't like how people can say, oh, we can go in there and get you answers in 20 minutes. We'll, we, we can contact. How do you know that? Like, how do you, you, don't. you can't, you can't promise that kind of stuff. No. Only way that. you can promise that stuff is if you're setting it up. Forcing it. Somehow. Oh, sure. Yeah. Faking it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I was being nice. Forcing it. <laughs> We're not faking it because no. it, hap it happens a lot. It and that's the, I mean, that's the thing. I just, I, I didn't want to because they're very, very, very good friends. Yeah. And I didn't want to say, oh yeah, let's go. Let's go talk to your dad. I can talk to your dad. You, you've seen your dad now. Oh yeah, I'll talk to your dad. We'll get answers. You don't know if you can do that or not. And now you're promising, you're promising people that they're going to be able to talk to their loved one. And then it doesn't happen. So then it's like the dad doesn't love us. Dad doesn't want to talk to us. You know, there's a ton of different things that people can take away from that. Yeah. And that's not fair. You know, it's just not, we, we don't, we try to do these investigations and you try to get answers to things, you know, nothing to little about, and we're still learning. And we know just about that much of this much. And there's so many people out there that are running around saying they could do this and do that. And I can talk to this and I can do. I challenge mm -hmm. you on that. I challenge even, you on that. Even a medium can't do it. They cannot guarantee who they're talking to ever. You know, they can sit there and tell you who they think they're talking to, but I don't think they can validate it a hundred percent. And, you know, like my mom passed away 36 hours after my grandson was born. I think I've heard her maybe one time. And I think I, it was when I was in the hospital. And did I hear her when I was in the hospital? I don't know, but I thought I did. But my sister says she sees her all the time. And I was like, well, you know, maybe because you need her more than I do. Yeah. I haven't seen my mom since she died. And on the other hand, my sister says she's never seen my dad, but she was four. She may not remember what he looks like. <laughs> I've seen my dad. Right. Not, not in a few years now, but, but when I was younger, I saw him all the time. So, and April says the same thing. She hasn't heard from her dad either, except for in her dreams, but he never speaks. And yeah. you, in April, there's reasons that they say that happens in dreams and I'll have to get Farrah to explain that to you. She she's very good um, explaining you, that. You've had a lot of those too, or you said they didn't speak. No. So it's weird, but you know it is when when it comes right down to it. Anybody who says that they can guarantee that they're going to talk to somebody, it's it just makes me question it more. And so Gary says often it's really them in the dreams they do speak but for some reason you can't remember them talking when you wake up hmm. that's true too sometimes 
but Gary's Gary's actually part of our production company helping us do the the uh, Dark Realm Network. Okay, so how do you say his last name? Yes. W. Okay. <laughs> that guy. Gary W. Gary W. Okay. G W. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So hey, but, when you guys investigate, what's what's your uh favorite piece of equipment or anything that you trust or have the most confidence in on me on getting it? Yeah. Me. What is it? Me. Yeah. Yeah. When I go in and, and film and investigate, I don't like to use all the little gadgets. No, we don't we don't use much. Either. I think I think people spend way too much time watching for something to start beeping and flashing yep. that You'll you're miss missing. Some. Yeah. Um yeah. my biggest thing when I started doing like all the filming and stuff was I wanted to go in maybe with an audio recorder and then a, a camera. That's it. And because I want let's say I'm at a hotel. I want to try to experience and capture on film what the average person would experience if they stayed there. Um, same thing, you know, sitting wh wherever you go. And it has happened. Um, Collinwood happened to me. Scared the living crap out of me. But, uh, you know, I used to do all the, the K2 meters and all this other stuff. Now I have a K2 meter somewhere. I used to use it as a paperweight. Because <laughs> I just... It, there, there's too many things that set it off and and so I, I i just didn't get really into that um but yeah no i my biggest thing is me and my senses and uh, a camera yeah i think if i think that the equipment is good if you're running a big group <laughs> investigation because a lot of people want to see the lights go. A lot of people want to hear the stuff beep. They want to see that. Because that's, that's the cool I, stuff on TV. Well, and that's what <laughs> I say. It's yeah. the TV stuff. So I think if you're doing a, um, a big group investigation and people are wanting just to have the experience of investigating and seeing that stuff, I think it's great. If you're filming for content it's entertainment. Yep. But if you're actually doing it as an investigator and you want to go in and experience a location and you want to experience what's happening there, I would put it all away. Maybe a camera so you can you can, you know, document what's going on, but put all that shit away. Put it away. Go in and sit in a room and take in the room. Listen to what's happening in the room. Feel what's happening in the room. Trust your senses. Trust your body. Your body is the, the best piece of equipment that you have. And I think, like Joe was saying, there's too many times where you're looking down to, to see that K2 meter beep to green that you're missing an apparition walking through the walking through yeah. the room or seeing a, a, a light anomaly or whatever that you're so focused on that piece of equipment waiting for it to go green because you asked it 17 minutes ago to turn green and it still hasn't, you're missing what's happening around you. So I, I for me, it's, it's the, it's the body. It's trust your senses, trust uh, what you're feeling, trust what you're hearing, that kind of stuff. If you want to take a camera, great um, to document that kind of stuff so that you have that documentation. But I, I, I don't like all the, the big fancy beeping equipment and everything else only because I think it takes away from um, what you're, what you're able to experience if you just put that all down. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Just don't lay in the middle of the floor somewhere in the dark to somebody else step on you. Right. That's happened. I know. I'm usually the one sitting in the middle of the floor and somebody comes in and goes, Oh, you're here. <laughs> I've sat in at the end of a hallway with two other people for an hour and a half where they say that there's a shadow person that rushes people and I've seen nothing. And I mean, we sat there, yeah, we're like there said, an hour and a half and I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> but again, that's because things don't happen 
when you want them to happen. Right. They happen when they're going to happen. I was going to say, you can't, you can't turn on and off activity. You know, I, there's, if, if there was a set schedule and a set time, then we'll go back to your comment 10 minutes ago, where if you can say at two 30 every day, this apparition walks through this room or down this hallway, chances are, it's not a coincidence. Yeah. And BD Morgan, thank you for being here. Um, he's, says, another, I feel- he's another part of the LEP Productions perfect, team. Perfect. It says, I feel that many of the places we've investigated and the stories of the places, real or not historical to them, breathe life into them by itself when many others carry the stories that make the energy on its own possible. And, you know, that's one of the things that I've told people in the past is sometimes the real history is way more interesting than the legends. Mm -hmm. And the legends somehow come to life from people repeating them so many times that it becomes part of the location. Oh, lies spread faster. Oh, yeah. But that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So. Hmm. So, hello, Tanya. Is that Tanya? T A N I N. That's Tanya my wife. Marie. That's oh. my wife. That's oh. the boss. Yeah, that's the boss. That's the boss. <laughs> yeah, like I said, the uh, when we were in Ozark, how in the heck did you get her? She's way too good for you. Oh, she is. She, I, I got lucky, and I still don't know why she's. I, do, you, do you keep her drunk? <laughs> I try. I try. <laughs> <to>. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm way out of my league on that one. That's for sure. <laughs> Brian said safety coordinator. Yeah, that's what they call my wife because yeah. my wife she'll come and investigate with us every once in a while, but she's one of those where you know there's paint peeling, there's we need to pay attention to what's so we've always just dubbed her the safety coordinator for all the uh all the paranormal investigations we do. But she's had a couple of oh oh shit uh experiences, which is fun. That's the other thing I like. I like when new investigators or Mm -hmm. people that are really trying to understand what's happening and they have that oh shit moment to where it's like, did I just really, did I just see that? I'm like, yes, you did. Welcome to the club. (laughs) Yeah. I I tell you, that is funny. It is one of the most rewarding things when somebody who is a skeptic gets to have a paranormal experience on your watch. Yep. And I loved having that happen at the Sally house so many times that, you know, I expected it week over week to happen. So, and Gary asks, have you guys ever used dowsing rods? I, you know, (laughs) I am, (laughs) I would, I would like to sit with somebody using dowsing rods that I trust that, will use them correctly because I know for a fact that dowsing rods are easily manipulated. And I struggle with sitting next to people that I don't know with a piece of equipment that can be easily manipulated and get answers to questions. I struggle with that. Um, Hell, even with people we know. Yeah, I just... If I, if I, and it's just like using a Ouija board. Okay. I, you can see in the back, I make custom Ouija boards, um, with, with, uh, uh, Susie who, who actually laser engraves everything for me. Um, Joe makes Ouija boards. Um, I've been around Ouija boards forever. I have a ton of them in the house. My walls don't bleed. I've never been thrown down steps. I've never had any of those problems with Ouija boards. But I've also never had a planchette move on a Ouija board ever in my life when I've had my hands on it, yeah. ever. No, I've sat next to people and watched them do it. I've seen Teresa and Tina do Ouija board sessions, and it moves for them religiously. I trust them both. So who am I to say that they're doing something that they're, they shouldn't be? It was just us in the house. It wasn't There were no cameras. There wasn't anything happening. But something that can be so easily manipulated i i 
I question it. I can't I, do the dowsing rods. I can't. Um, I've been around this way too long and I've seen way too many people. Like when you got your rods and you're like, okay, where's Joe? And it's like, okay, you know where Joe on. is because you're sitting there next yeah, to him. And, yeah. And it's just instant. And then it's like, okay, open them up for yes and instantly. And it's like, okay, put them back and instant. And it's like, okay, nah. Yeah. And then, you know, you see their hands moving. And or their feet. I mean, if they're yep. standing up, you can see that. I, and I understand that. And, you know, our power company back in Kansas City. The they, way I hold them, there's, I, I couldn't move them. Because I'm not, I'm not hold. I'm just supporting them. That's all I do. Yeah. And and if and if I I would and love to, I would that, love to. Up, I couldn't do it. I would love to do that with you because ninety yeah. percent of the people it's, it's, you see them holding and all right, you, right. to God, all you have to do is apply a little bit of pressure. Or right. Make that pressure go. Yeah, my and, hands are open and they'll move. So if you they're can, open, they're open. I'm just, I'm just holding. I'm just supporting them. That's yeah, it. If you're not really... putting any pressure on them, no, I would, none. I would love to see it. Yeah. Because I, Ron, I trust you, and I would love to yeah. do it with you. Um, and that's I how I was it. taught. So I, I, I got good instructions from the very beginning. So it, it was, it works out for me. That's the only way I know. I perfect. I'll tell you, we had back in Kansas City. KCPNL, which is now Evergy, they actually hire people to do to use dowsing rods yeah, to you can locate the lines. Yeah. And I, how do they do it? I don't know. Um, they, this is, I've seen the guy come out and locate the lines in our yard, and they don't have any other piece of equipment. Just this guy with dowsing rods <laughs> walking out there, <laughs> and you're like, okay. And then I had family members that found you know, water with them. But I mean, in certain parts of the country, there's water. If you dig down far enough, there's water anyway. Right. So, you know, I always have a problem with some of the stuff because I know I don't have any problems with using dowsing rods, but I've gotten to the point where I don't use them anymore because, no, we haven't because, in a while. because I can tell you what they're going to say. And, you know, somebody else you know, what the spirit's going to say, I, I can just tell you, and I take out the guesswork. And again, we're not sitting there watching for these rods to cross. We're watching right. everything else around us. So it makes sense on that. And a Ouija Most board, time. we've never touched one, even mm -hmm. though I'm from the home of the Ouija board in Baltimore. I got, you know one. I got one yeah. hanging up on the wall. Yeah. I actually yeah. made a custom one for uh, Robert Murch. It's got it at his uh, museum. Out there, I've, I've I've made I've made Ouija boards for a ton of different people. I love them, and the reason I wanted to get back to them is to bring back the original wooden boards. I love the designs on the boards. I love making the designs and coming up with the designs instead of the cardboard Parker Brothers versions that you can. That's the thing you you can you can buy them at Toys R Us at the age of nine, but yet. <laughs> Once you open it up, then you're opening up the the porthole Port of the hell. <laughs> to demons, yeah. yeah. And you've got all these crazy demons that are coming in from your Parker brothers. You should see what I can do with a deck of Uno cards. I'm pretty sure you're good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, then you can you can take that does and you it, can does take it, it look right. Like this, what Whoa. you can do with Uno cards? Whoa. Joe, is that is that a distant cousin, Joe? <laughs> I think so. no, too tall, right? <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that Director goes back. Logo. That goes back to, you can use anything, and it's whatever you're putting into it is what you're going to get out of it. So you can, I mean, you can take and use whatever piece of equipment you want. It's the intent for me is is more yeah. of of what's of what you're going to get than anything else. Yep. Yeah. So. Jason, do you recall the the young lady from the hotel that Ron and I talked to for three hours? <laughs> yes. You know, the next morning we went to her house. Okay. The one the girl that worked there. Yeah, he knows yeah. who I'm talking about. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Very, very nice lady. The audience may not. <laughs> they, yeah. What was funny about you know she she told told us all the stuff that was going on at her at her house and. And with her life and, and all this. 
And, you know, I had told her, you know, that I thought that Jeff Lepper would be a better person to help, you know, that I didn't think that I didn't need to be doing anything. You know, I know my limitations. I don't have, you know, God may be on my side, but I don't have him on a first name basis in my Rolodex. Right. So, um, but I thought that Jeff would be a better person. So we met Jeff and them out there. And one of the funniest things to happen was she has a five-year-old daughter. Five-year-old daughter doesn't talk to strangers. She doesn't like strangers, which is smart. You know, she saw me and I said something to her, to the five-year-old. And she ended up being my best friend for the rest of the day. That's fine. Yeah. So the, the story that, that she told us, the lady at the hotel, was all true. She introduced us to her um, roommate, grandmother's stepson or whatever, introduced us to him. This kid... Her ex-husband's son. Yeah, her ex-husband's son. Her grandmother's widow. You know, she's the widow of... the. Of, it's a long story. Right. These these lines cross over a lot. This kid was once they prayed over him, his eyes lit up and he was a whole different person. He, he smiled. Finally. Yeah, he smiled. They all did. None of them had smiled the entire time mm -hmm. that we had been there until Jeff was done the multiple prayers over over the family. Gotcha. It was an amazing thing. And I'm still in contact with, with the lady. And she sent me a message and she says, everything's going good. It doesn't feel it. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like it did before we came. She's invited us to come and visit when we come back into Ozark because her daughter, her five-year-old daughter thinks I'm her best friend. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that event that we went to had some unforeseen pluses. Right. You know, we had met at another event in Marshalltown, Iowa. Right. You guys were busy. I was busy. Yeah, we you were know, volunteers. Yeah, we were volunteers. We were we were helping with everything at this right. event. And you guys had your table and you it was know, busy. Oh, and it was hot as hell. And poor Jay is in his Bigfoot in his, you know, being Bodine in the in August. Well, Bodine is Bodine. Jay might have been missing when Bodine was running around. Yeah. But, but Bodine But is Bodine, Bodine was smelly. I'm just saying. He smelled <laughs> right? like Bigfoot. Right. <laughs> he did. That's a thing. Yeah. I got a got a picture with him um that Sunday morning that you guys left. Um right. Marshalltown. Oh God. But um you guys were just so busy. I mean, you guys were also promoting your energy drinks. Yeah. Was there something else that you guys were promoting besides your shows and and the energy drinks? No, the energy yeah. drink was was what we were doing there yeah. for that one. Yeah. It was definitely a warm day. It, yeah. it was. It was it was horrible. I mean, the whole weekend was was hot, but I know that I got sunburned sitting out there talking, you know, visiting, visiting, but watching um, Travis Walton speak. Mm -hmm. That that right there was the highlight of my year that year was talking to Travis Walton. Oh, it wasn't it wasn't us. You guys were really close important. Second. I, close I, second. I, I, I <laughs> close second. Close second. Close second. I, I get it. I mean, I know, you know. Well, you, you the jail know. was pretty interesting too. Yeah. We did we did the investigations with uh, two or three uh, with Michelle LeBaron. Yeah. And uh, she's awesome. I'm actually and, gonna see uh, her Saturday. Amy, yep. Amy yeah. Green. And uh, of course we had Josh and some other people that tried to burn down the jail that we had to stop. You know, there was all that. It was that was an interesting babysitting. thing. Babysitting. Yeah, we were babysitting. That's what I tell everybody. I said I'm I'm a herder. I'm a person people herder. But 
that event was really good. And I, and I'll tell you the funniest thing was when we were at that event in Marshalltown and we're talking to Travis, you know, Travis is up there speaking and they're taking questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. And my daughter sends me a message and she says, ask Travis Walton this question. He's going, don't ask it. Don't ask it. <laughs> and so I decide I'm going to ask the question. So I asked, asked him, he goes, so what, what's your question? I said, who is your favorite Kardashian? And he sits up, he's got this big grin on his face and starts talking about Bruce Jenner, about how he got to meet Bruce Jenner and how much he enjoyed that being on that show. <laughs> and he, he goes, that was the most unexpected question he ever had. <laughs> gotcha. So if you're ever in a, in a room with Travis Walton and he's, taking questions, ask him that question and hear what he has to say. Cause he went on for 20 minutes. Didn't even know it was a show. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even know that it was a show that he was going there for. He just, he didn't know the name of the show. He just knew he was going and he's going to meet Bruce Jenner. That's funny. Wow. <laughs> What's up Josh? So of all the events that you've, you've gone to Jason, I'm going to ask you the same two, same one, Joe. What has been the the event that you would go back to every time if they had it more often or whatever? Well, my event, of course. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. Um, you know what? It's so hard to pick one because there are a lot of good events. Um, there's a lot of good events out there. Um, and each one to me holds something a little different. Um, you know, the one in Marshalltown we did with Bodine and that was great. And we got to see Michelle and everybody and had a great time. There's other events that we've done, uh, you know, Scarefest and Horror Hounds and those, those are all different style events, um, but different people. And it's a, it's a lot of good time. I enjoy events where I can just sit and talk with people and engage people and meet people. I enjoy meeting new people. I enjoy talking to them. Um, you know, we did Silcon. Uh, Silcon was great. It was a smaller town, but that was a great event. And you get different people in there. It's To me, it's all about the people. It's not so much the events. It's not so much the selling of the merchandise or the pictures or the movies or the T-shirts or whatever. It's about meeting the people um, and the interaction that you have with the people that are coming up to you at your tables or listening to you speak. Um, I did one a few years ago in uh, Louisiana uh, where they brought us out and Jane, Teresa and Rick and I and uh, Scott Tepperman was there and a bunch of us were there. And they actually um, wanted me to do some of the presenting because some of the money that was raised was going back to a local police precinct that was trying to raise some money for, I think, maybe a canine or something to that effect. But they knew my involvement with law enforcement and that kind of thing. So they asked me to um, to present the check to the, the precinct. That was fun. But again, it's about meeting the people. It's about... To me, that's that's what these conventions are about. Um, I can go to them. Yeah, it's great to take pictures and sell your pictures and sell your movies and all that stuff. And it's it's fun to do that. Um, but to me, it's all about meeting the people. I, I enjoy a weekend of talking with everybody and going out to dinner and seeing people afterwards and just getting to know um, the people that you know, you do these shows all the time and you see names, but you never meet the names. Doing these events, you get to meet the people. You get to meet the names. That's what I like about it. I, I enjoy that part of it. So I don't really have one that I, it's like, that's the best one ever. Um, because there's so many different ones out there that bring so much different things and different people. Um, I just, I enjoy the camaraderie. I enjoy getting together with everybody and seeing everybody and uh, meeting the people that, you know, you can see on the shows, but you don't ever get to meet. 
until you do these kind of shows and conventions. Yeah. How many do you go to a year? Oh, God, we used to do it. We used to do a ton. And then honestly, um, with trying to build this network that we're doing and trying to, to do that, we've, we've cut way back. Now um, I am doing a couple with uh, Scott promoting the cruel summer franchise and the movies that I'm doing with, with Los Bastards and that. Um, but a lot of them now are going to be more centered around the dark rum network and LEP productions are our, our stuff to, to push this network. Um, but I mean, usually f- shit, at one point in time, I was probably doing seven or eight a year. Oh, wow. Yeah. There was a point in time, I'd say probably 15 years ago, I was probably doing two a month at least. Wow. And were you going to just going at, were you a speaker or have a um, table or were you just going to see it? I've done, I've done all. Um, I've been speaker. I've. I did a lot with Z Talk Radio. We were uh, always broadcasting live from all these events, uh, mm-hmm. Gettysburg, Salem. I mean, we were like all over the place. And uh, it just, it it became too much. You know, my, my kids were younger um, and, you know, I'm gone two weekends a month and it, it was rough. So I kind of stepped back a little bit. And uh, now, now that they're grown, they can figure it out themselves. So, right. <laughs> Now well, I'm, uh, they might now need I'm a little going. bit more guidance now. Oh, no. Oh, if they're, they're getting their news from TikTok, they will. Well, that's on them. But no, right. they're 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 20 and 23. They have at it. There's the world. Yeah. Now it. Let's see. Just like you were saying, there was Ozark, Alabama. Mm-hmm. There's uh, next weekend is um, the the location that I do a lot with here. It's the Collingwood Arts Center here in Toledo, Ohio. It's 80,000 square feet of investigative space. Um, it's been on Ghost Hunters uh, their first season back. Um, we were able to work with the Booth Brothers to have Never Blink filmed. The majority of that film was filmed at this location, which I, I, from what I understand is going to be coming out here soon. Um, so we've got an event at the Collingwood. It's a smaller one, but that's on the 11th. Um, then I'm doing Scarefest with Scott. Uh, that weekend afterwards, and then we'll be in Kenosha, Wisconsin, the first weekend of November. And then there's another event um, in December at the Collingwood Arts Center again. So, I mean, there's five right there in the last two and a half, three months. Um, wow. And I honestly, just like Joe was saying, you know, I my youngest is a sophomore in college, um, but, you know, I, I couldn't do this. I could not do this at all without the support of my wife. My wife is um, just an amazing support uh, person. She's my best friend. Uh, We just celebrated our 20th wedding anniversary last week. Congratulations. Thank you. When Uh, you get the party, let me know. If I live that long, I will will definitely let you know. But I couldn't do it without her. I definitely could not do any of this. She has supported and backed me and and all my friends and and everybody 100 percent. and honestly i couldn't without her i couldn't do any of it yeah. at all so you're all ready to take to get your oscar speech it's ready to go so you're good there so and joshua florida is not boring it depends on what part of florida you're in because we're having a great time here in florida i'm just saying josh yeah. is doing a bunch of stuff too he's yeah. He's got a podcast. He's doing uh, he's doing a lot of stuff too. He was actually just helping his parents. They um, doing some stuff with the hurricane. Um, they got hit pretty bad, so he was. Yeah, like I said, that's that's where we were this this weekend. Was you know the tropical storm portion hit northwestern South Carolina. Um, yeah, that fast three times. Oh, I know. And uh, we were up in Easley and Pickens. And um, for those of you who know know that area, that's also where Brandon Cooper lives of Supernatural Inc. They got affected as well. They lost power and everything. They were just they were just down the street from where we were at, but we didn't have a chance to to meet up because well, God said no. You're gonna go clean, do this other stuff. 
So, um, but yeah, it, it was like Armageddon there. I, I swear it was, and it'll, it'll get better. And yeah, Jim, all of that was horrible to see, you know, so. I just um, pray, I pray that this, because supposedly there's a whole nother round uh, coming wow. by the end of this weekend. So yeah, right, right. now they say that the, the storm zone is from Texas to Florida. Wow. They don't know where it's going to hit. So. I could have predicted that. <laughs> right. And I'm not even the weatherman. And, it's going to be somewhere and, south. <laughs> it's going to hit I somewhere you, south. Somebody told me from to work, said if we live in Milton, Florida, and they said if the hur if Hurricane Milton is going to hit you, we will send you an airplane ticket to come to Denver. <laughs> <laughs> they go, you deserve to get out if Milton hits Milton. I wouldn't Milton. go to Denver. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I kind of had to laugh. But we're also, you know, we're 30 miles inland, but that doesn't mean shit if you're 600 miles inland and you get hit. Yeah. Right. You know, I I told people, I said, this is really <laughs> strange. I said, my house, I, I left a perfectly good house that got, no, it got misted and a little bit of wind to go to some place where I didn't have power, food, gas, anything. Little prelim down. Yeah. <laughs> I picked up the whole two branches that fell off the damn tree. So, and I'm not bitching. I'm happy as pie that that's what it is. But I'm just right. so sad for all those other people out there that. Yeah. Disney World might be a little rainy. Josh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all right. He's he's a certified scuba diver. He's good. That's right. He, he's there got his go. scuba gear. He's good. We start so going you're going to Disney? Scene. Yeah, well, maybe you can swim up in the line, get a little closer. <laughs> but they don't usually get hit too bad over there. So, right. I don't know. Uh, Joe? Yes. So you, you used to do a lot of events. Have you? When was the last event you did that you went to? Uh, just in June, I did an event over at the Old Baraboo Inn in Baraboo, Wisconsin. Okay. Um, they, I kind of help out up there with the, some of the ghost hunting stuff, stuff like that. Uh, cook in the kitchen sometimes, but uh, going to which I'm going to be doing some stuff here towards the end of the month up there, helping helping Shelly out. Great place, fun place. Uh, they got a lot of little tours that go through their little mini ghost hunts and stuff pretty much almost every weekend. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I mean, I want to, she say travel the way, you know, I want to do like, I wish Wisconsin had more, you know? Um, but I think everyone says that, you know, if you lived in California, you'd be like, Oh, I wish there was more stuff happening out here. Then, you know, like Ohio, I'm like, God, oh, why can't I be closer to Ohio? Cause everything's going on over there. But I guarantee yeah. you, if I lived there, I'd be like, ain't nothing going on. Yeah. What are some hot spots in Wisconsin to um, investigate? You know what? One that I really, and this one holds close to my heart, is Brumder Mansion in Milwaukee. Um, we went there when I, when I lived in Kenosha. I had a team out there. And we went there and, oh, man, it had to have been 2006 maybe. 2007 and Tom and Julie are the owners. They're great people. I've probably been there three dozen times since then. Uh, I haven't been out there lately, you know, COVID and I just haven't been out yet. But I mean, my wife and I used to stay there all the time. Tom would call me and be like, Hey, I got this group coming in from New York. Here's a room for the weekend. Do you want to just hang out? You know, I don't know who they are. Sure. You know, um, I've I've had I've had a couple good moments there also that you know and I'm and I'm the skeptical one and I I can't I can't answer it. So I love that place. That's probably a big one for me. Um hmm. Brumder and then you got old Baraboo Inn. Um right what five minutes from my house is the Walker House. Um it was I mean, it just dated back in history. Like they used to do public hangings right there in the courtyard and stuff like that. I want to go there, but the owners are, are, they want nothing to do with paranormal. If you even call and mention ghost, they'll just hang up the phone. Yeah. Is so, it a bed and breakfast or? It is actually, 
like uh, an event venue. Like they do uh, reception dinners and and stuff yeah. like that. Well, who's to say you can't run it and do a ghost hunt there? Not right? tell them. Yeah. Um, can you finger me in some? Say the bride and, didn't show up. Right. And <laughs> there for the longest time, they're talking about it up for sale. So I was like, and I told my wife, I said, I'm I'm just waiting because as soon as someone buys it, I'm picking the phone up. Yeah. So I'm still waiting. <laughs> mm. So yeah, a friend of ours, Amelia Cotter, she she, I uh, just seen her in June. Yep. Yeah. She's she's actually from Maryland as well. And uh we a house that I used to live in, she's she's younger than me, of course. Um, but she had actually investigated a house that I lived in that became abandoned sometime after we lived there. And she is telling me all this stuff. I was like, I know, I lived there. And she goes, no, you didn't. I go, yeah, I did. It, I lived there when it was a real farmhouse and there was a farm. <laughs> so it, it's weird when you come across people that know, know your area that yeah. you grew up in. And then you guys can, you can bond over that kind of stuff. And that's, I, that's probably why you guys are such good friends. You know, the area. and, and what's funny is my, my family, like my dad's side of the family, they're all from Cleveland. Uh, so the Italian side of my family all live in Cleveland and stuff. And all the Greek side of my family live in Canton. That's why I was making a joke about him earlier saying stay out of Canton. Right. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> you're probably having an internal battle with yourself. Oh, there's a battle. but Greeks and Italians <laughs> don't always like each other. Right? right. <laughs> yeah. So... So, yeah, I mean, it, it is funny. Well, last time I was up there in Toledo uh, with a little surprise party for uh, Jason, <laughs> we were sitting there talking a little about the, the good old days when we didn't know each other. So, Well, we were just watching Toledo on OP Live. Yeah, that's our weekend. Yeah, that's our city, guys. Are you really proud of it? <laughs> uh no, wait, here's the here's the thing. Where they're at is that's where I'm at daily. So it's and I know all those guys and girls. They're all yeah. Um, they are really good officers. Um, yeah, and I know that it's uh, it's a fun thing to have it here. Um, the, it's colorful the camera guys. Town. It's, uh, it's they're busy. The, <laughs> we are we are definitely busy. Unfortunately, yeah. it's um, it's like a smaller version of Detroit, and it's actually catching up to the numbers um, that are in Detroit. And it's right. uh, yeah, it's yeah. We were there's, just there's definitely there's definitely not uh, uh, you, you don't have to sit around and wait for action per se. So it's not like my town. No, it's no, it's not at all. No, your town's no. sleepy, isn't it? Oh. Or well, passed out completely. <laughs> a little bit of both. A little bit of both. Yeah. Well, hey there, um, Bart. I hope you're doing well up there in uh, Kansas City. And he says he grew up in uh, Westland, Lavinia area. <laughs> Been to strip clubs in Toledo. Tom, yeah. you're supposed to say you heard about strip yeah, clubs. You've seen so it I, on yeah. Movie. I used to DJ at... <laughs> strip clubs in Toledo. <laughs> From what you see, heard, right? See those blue eyes fashion guys? That means get them gorgeous ladies back on the couches. 10 topless, 20 totally naked. Oh, yeah. I've been there. I've done that. <laughs> you know what? What you ought to do is come here for a Mardi Gras parade because all the strip clubs have their... They got a float they, or they, two they, or three. Or six. And then uh, not only that, apparently they're training the younger ones you know, like six and seven <laughs> to dance in these parades as well. And they oh. Just, oh, yeah, it's, it's sad. I mean, yeah. I, that's, I mean, that's when my work comes in, right? Uh, uh. That's when you're sitting there going, Oh my God, what are you doing to these kids? I mean, these little girls are dressed in ways they shouldn't be dressed yep. and they're right behind the stripper float and you're going. And see, I was just about to say, Mr. President, get us, get us out there. Right. And then you finish that and it was like, and then oh, you finish mind. with the children. Too. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we and, could, we could still go out to the, to the party, just not the, not know, the parade. 
the thing is, is we start <coughs> having Mardi Gras parades here on January 6th. Okay. Well, I expect an wow. invitation. And um, you're welcome anytime. All right. Uh, like I said, the January 6th is when they start and they go all the way through till Fat Tuesday. Wow. At night, wear your shorts and a t shirt. <laughs> okay. Bye. It's don't the you, weirdest thing. Yeah. Don't, you, don't you threaten us with a good time now. Because <laughs> January, <laughs> January 6th will be like, <laughs> hey, how's it going? <laughs> We're here. Well, whatever Saturday is closest to January 6th. Let's go with that. Okay. Because they do it on Saturdays. And uh, we did the Christmas parade, too. Luckily, the strippers weren't involved in that. I think it was too Catholic, too Christian. Gotcha. But Everybody's got their their boats, you know. The crews are all. I mean, it's a good time. It was fun. That was on the roof. There was well, yeah. no. That one, well, the floats the one are here in town. The, the floats are the. They call the floats. They call the people on the floats the crew. That sounds fun. So right. So it is fun. I mean, it was the strangest thing going to a Christmas parade, and with just a jacket on and sitting there going, oh, oh, and watching the boats on the boat parade as well. So. Heck but yeah. yeah, Toledo. She wears a jacket in the middle of summer here. That's hundred. I'm, I'm pretty sure he oh, saw that when yeah. we were at the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> I was cold, so I got a blanket here. So, because I'm cold, so children need hope and love, not terror. Yeah, that's true, Jonathan. They need. They don't need terror and torment. So. So how long have you been a police officer or were you a police officer, Jason? I am still active and I just started 29 years. Congratulations. And thank you so much for your service. Absolutely. And, and after watching Toledo on OP Live, that's a scary place sometimes. Oh, I mean, it can be. Um, the unit I'm in now is a, it's a very sensitive unit, so... Um, the last seven or eight years, I've done uh, all sex offenders, arson, and violent offenders. So that's um, and that's probably where I'll end my career is in that unit. Um, there's still some things I I'd like to I'd like to change and and uh, and make a little better. So I see yeah. you doing it. Yeah, it's uh, there's a there's a lot of disturbing things that happen obviously so oh um yeah we're just more aware of it now i think than we were when we were younger you know before everything became more instant you know oh. news is instant now i mean back then when i was growing up like in the 70s and 80s you heard about stuff but it was usually watered down by then because it had already happened months before you heard about it on the news. You know, it's just the way that it was. But I think you'll do great on on making a change. Um, as far as being a police officer, have you ever had any paranormal experiences while on duty? Um, I've... I've seen some things on duty that I can't explain, um, but like nothing over the top. Um, I Before I was in this unit, um, I was in our warrant enforcement unit, so I was out serving warrants every day. Um, wife really wasn't a big fan of that unit, but um, I, I enjoyed it. I had good partners. We worked out of the Muni court. We worked for the judges. They would give us a list. We would go and find them, uh, that sort of thing. Um, we pulled up to a house. Um, we both got out, and there was an older gentleman that when we pulled in, I didn't see him there. We got out. He was standing at the bottom of the driveway. And my partner and I both kind of looked at each other and looked back at him and you know, kind of waved and thought, that's kind of odd. Like I didn't see him pulling in and he wasn't moving fast enough to have covered a lot of space from us pulling in. Um, went up, knocked on the door, um, got what we needed to get and came back out to the car. And I mean, the guy was gone. 
Um, mm -hmm. He wasn't built to move that fast, and <laughs> he wasn't. It just that whole thing just didn't quite make sense. And my partner and I talked about it for a long time after that. Like, where did that guy come from? Like, we we pulled in. We <laughs> obviously we obviously would have seen, you know, Mister Mister Johnson from Scooby Doo walking in front of our car and got out and he was there and we did our thing, which wasn't that long. I mean, maybe a minute, minute and a half. And the guy was, I mean, gone, nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be found again. Like that kind of stuff happens. Um, we've been in searching buildings and searching different things where you hear or maybe see things and, you know, you search the room and search whatever and nothing's there, that kind of stuff. But Nothing really over the top or nothing profound that um, I could say 100% sure that it was a paranormal experience, but definitely things that's like, I wonder how that happened because it, it shouldn't, it shouldn't have happened like that. Yeah. Have you ever seen a ghost car? <laughs> a ghost car? Yeah. I have no. never seen a ghost car. Joe, I think, dude. I got a story for that one. Okay, one okay. time in Vietnam, <laughs> yep. drinking sake. And Actually, I was uh, in Portage, Wisconsin, at a uh, cemetery that it's about a half mile dirt road, one lane, and it ends, and the cemetery is right there on the left. I was out there with Scotty Rourke. Um, uh, David Olson from Chicago Paranormal. And I don't remember who else. I think I had a few other people with us. And we were just kind of sitting there, just just sitting down, just kind of talking. And we see the headlights coming up, and it's all trees and forest around us. And we see the headlights coming up. And we're like, oh, probably a cop, you know, whatever. Let's go meet him at the road. Let him know what Damn we're doing. Cops. Yeah. yeah, right? And... uh <laughs> Yeah, and damn cops. We They're see the headlights on the trees and we can see the brake lights, you know, the tail lights. Yeah. So we're like, eh. But we go walking and we get past these trees. We get to the road and there's nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. And, and in my brain, you, I'm like, well, let's, could you hear it? We could hear it. Yeah. But okay. could not hear it. You know, and you know, you put a cart in reverse, you can tell yeah. that sound. There was nothing. Uh, we even had a big spotlight that Scotty had, and he signed this thing down the road to where it hit the stop sign. Mm -hmm. Way down, you can see that there's no car, no car. I mean, and there was nowhere to park on the side of the road. So I, that that place to this day is another. Um, I think actually Chad Lewis. Uh, wrote about it in a, in one of his books. Yeah. Um, it is it's nuts. And like to this day, Scotty and I were just together. What about a month and a half ago? And uh, him and I were actually talking about that night. And this was probably 10, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I've seen it, but even my little skeptical ass is like, I don't know. I had a, we were on a highway in Kansas City heading down to where we lived, and this red sports car looked like an older model Mustang went past me on and was weaving in and out of traffic and went off the road. And I saw this, so I pulled off the side of the road and had 911 on the, on the phone. Not only did I see him, my daughter who was sitting next to me in the car saw it. And she saw me, you know, I got out of the car to look where this car went off the road. There were no tire tracks. There was a fence at the bottom of the road. There, so there was no car could have went through there. I asked a friend about it. You know, I said, have you ever heard about this? And she goes, oh, yeah. She goes, people have been talking about this for years. And I'm like, why didn't you tell me? You know, but apparently it's one of those things. I never saw it again. We only saw it that one day. And I don't know if it was something that happened only at that day and that time and or certain conditions, whatever. But it was one of those weird things that to this day, you know, if I hadn't 
called 911 and my daughter hadn't seen it, I'd have thought, oh, I'm just seeing shit. Hmm. So, but when I was on the phone with 911, I wasn't the only one that called it in. So, Interesting. I was expecting to see a fence torn down at the bottom and that some car had went off on this gravel road somewhere. And, oh, well, it's weird. So, so what do you guys, where can everybody find you guys? We're, it's quarter to the next hour. So, <laughs> depending upon where you are, it's quarter to nine or it's quarter yeah. to 10. Right. So, where can everybody find you, Jason? Uh, well, I mostly on Facebook, um, Jason Schneider, Facebook, um, LEP Productions as uh, our production company um, on Facebook. Um, we also um, are going to be launching this Dark Realm Network, um, which will be Roku, Fire Stick, and Apple TV. Um, we'll have paranormal shows, paranormal cryptid, UFO, urban legend, thrill seeking, um, podcasting, um, horror movies, it'll all be on this network. Um, and that is scheduled to launch here in the next week or two. Um, so you'll be able to find us there as well. It'll be the Dark Realm TV network. Um, and that's our basic, our three biggest things. I know Joe, go ahead with your stuff. He's he's also got Facebook and some YouTube yeah. stuff as well. Facebook, uh, YouTube, Skeptical Edge TV. I haven't done much with it lately, um, but we're going to be getting some things going again. Um, I've got a couple ideas for actually a couple shows that we're going to produce and put on the uh, network. Um, but yeah, Facebook's probably the biggest one. I play around with TikTok a little bit, but I don't quite understand it. Like I'm just not that that savvy with it. But yeah, mm-hmm. face, Facebook's the biggest place for me. Yeah, I have a TikTok page too, but I can... I, I I don't know the damn name I use for the TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I mean I don't, and I I started, I only started the TikTok because I've got two daughters, and they were both like, oh we got forty six views on our, and oh we did another TikTok, we got one hundred and forty six. I said, I guarantee you, if I start a TikTok page, I'll get more views than you. And they're yeah. like, no you can't, Dad. You don't even know what you're doing, Dad. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I started a TikTok page. And I, I don't know, I've, there's like five or 6,000 followers on it. And some of the videos have done very well. I only do it just to have fun with it. So the content that I put on it is silly and <laughs> kind of comical and ridiculous. But I honestly started it just to be in a contest with my daughters. And there you it won. is. Yeah, I won. I, I started it just to put gaming videos on there. Because yeah, I Joe I, was gaming on Twitch and all yeah, kinds of stuff. streaming and stuff like that, and so I was putting video, you know, yeah. game clips. So, yeah, I don't understand well, it. So, well, it, it, do you know how to read Chinese? No. Okay. <laughs> so you guys couldn't teach me about it. So no. Okay. Right. Well. I would like to thank you guys for coming on tonight and spending time with the Paranormal Pride and all the lovely people in the chat room. I'd like to thank you guys all for listening. And we have covered all four time zones in the United, in the continental United States tonight on time. So we all know that it was quarter till whatever hour it was for all of us. Absolutely. (laughs) Join me tomorrow night with Ron and Carl, and we're going to have on John J. Davis, a near death experiencer. He's going to talk to us about his experience and we were supposed to have him on last week and he had a, his son had a car emergency. So we're going to have him on tomorrow night and it is going to be great listening to him. Tell us about his experience at death. So it'll be kind of interesting. So make sure you guys join us here tomorrow night at 5 PM central and and join me every Monday night at 7 PM central for the paranormal pride and whatever lucky guest decides that they want to do their time with me. So, (laughs) so we'll see you guys all tomorrow night and next week. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks again. Yeah. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks guys.